What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Friday. I'm one of your hosts, Brittany Brownbacher, alongside the stunning Christine Steinmer. Oh, hello. I Thank love you. That's so kind of you. This backdrop, which is your house, your apartment, because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you have this angelic light behind you just framing your face. It's all a ploy oh. to get you to think that I am innocent when I am not. And I love no, that all uh, I wearing. legit just don't have lighting um, in this corner. And I did the one time I did the show here, but I gave that light back to Andrea. Uh -huh. And I never took it back. So I will now be lit on YouTube.com slash What's Good Games by my computer screen. And nothing more. Oh, I was gonna say it compliments the all black look you got going on with like the beautiful like yeah you can't lip. see my hair. It looks like my hair is just in my shirt, which is not how it is. I'm also and wearing the shirt black, is gray, but, you know. but that's fine. Oh, it is. Yeah, oh, well, is well, maybe I need to adjust my <laughs> monitor. <laughs> no, it's literally just because the lighting is so shit. It all just <laughs> looks like one color. There's just like white and black are the two colors in your uh, camera this week, but that's fine. Yep. At least you're no longer a pumpkin. Well, you never wear a pumpkin. True. A pumpkin head, rather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pumpkin um, heads. Andrea is still resting and recovering. She is making great strides, and she's a badass. So we are back just to make sure she has another week to recover. And if she needs another week, she's going to get another week. Because, listen, surgery is never fun. And, you know, that's what we're here so for. So true. So all the well wishes to her. But she's kicking ass, again, like the badass that she is. So in the meantime, Steinbrenner and I are here with another Steinbacher episode. So let's get this thing kicked off by giving a shout out to March's Patreon producers, Chewie's godson, Alex Rogopoulos, Ferris Ate, Justin Foshi, Marcus Ian Brown, the nanobiologist, Mohammed Mohammed, and Punctified. And welcome Jeff Ramos to our Patreon community. And don't forget, not only can you be part of the show by submitting questions at patreon.com slash what's good games, but you can also get the show ad free in our epic membership tier. Thank you, new podcast reviewers, a random gamers corner. And Miniz988, who says, they are not kid-friendly, but they are pretty funny and good. Thank you. Somebody who is not going to put us on the top 10 podcasts for your children list. Every time. Because children should not be listening to this show. Every time. And, like, I think you've nailed it, Samer, when you said it's because we're all women. It's like, top shows that you should listen to with your teenage daughter or with your, like, your children. It's like, oh, no. I mean, no. I mean, like, I don't think we're as bad as some of the all-boy podcasts. We're not, um, that's fair. In terms of swears or topics, but we definitely do venture into mature territory at times. We, uh, we're we having a very interesting conversation before we went live with this episode. <laughs> and all I'll say is it might not ever see the light of day, but clicker dicks. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. So we're going to kick off this week's news segment, but before we do that, I want to let you know that this week's episode is brought to you by Logitech and HelloFresh, but we will tell you more about them later. So Steinmer, we have some rumors, some rumors that we're going to, we're going to chat about a little bit. And typically, you know, we don't give too much of a spotlight to rumors because they are just that, but you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I feel like these two sound pretty darn convincing. Um... To some respects. And because we are recording early, we are recording this show on Tuesday instead of our usual Wednesday or the last couple of weeks have been a Thursday. There's a chance that these might get confirmed, so we don't have to spend too much time on them. But we'll see. We'll see. The first one, my lovely Dazzling Steimer, is a report from The Gamer that says PS3, Vita, and PSP stores to be permanently closed in a few months. So... The PS3, PS Vita, and PlayStation Portable stores aren't long for this world. According to a source familiar with the situation verified by The Gamer, the stores are due to be closed down starting in July. The announcement is planned for the end of this month, which is March. PSP and PS3 stores are to be closed on July 2nd, while the PS Vita store will stay open until August 27th. And after those dates, you will no longer be able to purchase digital copies of games or DLC for any of the Sony consoles mentioned above. If you own any of the three consoles and you've always wanted to download a specific game, now is the time. No doubt the price of physical games will jump up once the stores cease to exist. So, funny story, when I first read this headline... I thought it meant physical stores. And I was like <laughs> scratching my head. You did. Wondering 
what physical store could be there be that only sells PS3, Vita, and PSPs? <laughs> Seems like an odd business model <laughs> that would not work out well for you. It wouldn't be very successful. Um, and I was like, no shit, they're closing. <laughs> 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 These are all old hardware. Uh, um, but yeah, then you were like, no, no, honey. The, the virtual stores on the consoles and i was like oh um, this makes more sense yeah i would be i'm honestly more surprised about the ps3 um than the vita or the psp i could see the vita and the psp definitely kind of getting the, <laughs> the axe. Luck. yeah but uh the ps3 is still a very uh common console to have so it would be odd to be like bye bye uh, bye and see like, that bitch Tink. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta upgrade to one of the other ones. They want you to upgrade. Yeah, so the PS3, I was looking into the numbers, sold 87 million units. That's not a small number to, you know, that's not. That's a lot of PS3s. Remember how fat yeah. those original ones were? My God. Those were, oh, yeah. Those were heavy boys. I mean, the PlayStation 5 gets a, gives it a run for its yeah, money, That's say. very true, actually. I forgot. I think I keep forgetting because it kind of looks more sleek rather than just like a big brick. It just has more design more elements to it. So, yeah, you know. you're like, mmm, mm. delicious. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this is kind of fascinating because this is the first time that I think we're dealing with a digital library, essentially, if this is to be true, if this is true, vanishing, right? Because PS3 was the first time that we had that real digital storefront. And now, I mean, obviously, Sony's losing money on it because if they weren't, they would not be closing it. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of sad to see a whole digital library potentially just kind of poof and vanish into thin air because last i checked yeah. there were some ps1 games on the ps3 that you couldn't get on ps4 or ps5 um in fact i just busted out my ps3 not that long ago to play yakuza dead souls and that this sounds correct yeah <laughs> you would absolutely i mean this is the most used story i've ever heard <laughs> i went to my treasure hoard of consoles and pulled out a really old one just so I could play a game from a million years ago. I did. I did. And I loved it. It was so good. Um, but yeah, I mean, and obviously, like, I think we are, we're not going to see this happen so much more in the future. Because obviously, with you look at your library from PS4 to PS5 or Xbox One to Xbox Series X or S, I think the technology is advancing enough in a way that we won't be losing the storefronts like we did with the PS3. Hopefully in the future. Hopefully this is like the real only time we'll have to deal with this until like the PS6 comes out and then <laughs> and then maybe like PS4 or PS5 games will kind of make, become obsolete in some way, shape, or form. But again, hopefully the technology will support the transferring of titles to those next gen consoles. But true. And again, this is also a rumor. So at this point they are not announced to actually be closing. So Yeah. It does kind of make you wonder though, um, how this is all gonna go down. When Sony announces this, how are they gonna phrase it? Are you gonna be able to re-download games that you've bought before? Um you know, it's it's just the future of the world, which is all digital. In fact, I was looking at some stats in via gamesindustry.biz, two thirds of the games sold in the UK last year were digital. Not totally surprising considering COVID-19 and everyone was like, we're staying yeah. at home. Mm -hmm. But it kind of does make you worry a little bit because what does that mean for games that you have bought? Anyway, like we'll figure it out as we go. But I'd imagine, I mean, I don't know, but yeah, I would imagine you could still download stuff you've purchased, but you can't buy anything new like the store just goes away yeah but whatever you've purchased remains in your um library yeah it just kind of sucks but at the same time there's two different ways to look at it right the one is like it sucks because you know game preservation is important and you're going to lose a lot of well i don't know if a lot's the right word but there are games that are available only on digitally digitally on ps3 that you can't get physical copies of what happens when those go away I mean, I guess you're going to be stuck to watching. Old I mean, Let's Plays. you better start. Uh, those are called investments. Oh, Brittany. Oh, and right. you got to go grab the <laughs> physical copies of them for cheap right now and wait for that price to go up. This is a pro tip. It's like Pokemon me. cards. Please don't follow this. This is not an investment <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Sam, we're surefire way to be a millionaire by the time you're like 55. Just buy, all buy a bunch of PSP and Vita games. <laughs> <laughs> hoard them in your treasure trove and then sell them for billions exactly it's it's a fail safe or fail wait fail, fail proof, proof. I don't, 
<laughs> I was, you know, it's really funny you bring this up because I was just looking into fail safe versus fail proof the other day, and I'm glad I did. Oh, really? Yeah, like this was literally yesterday. I, yeah, when I was looking through my, um, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna go down this huge tri- tributary. Anyway, fail sure. fail safe is like a machine operated thing. You know, it's a machine fail safe. Something won't kill you. Fail proof is like, ooh, I'm so smart. I've come up with this idea that could never go wrong, like my idea of having a cat shelter with 15 cats and making a living when I was 10 years old. I mean, you invented cat cafes. I'm just going to say did. it. Thanks, Simer. I, I, again, you know, we sh- maybe we should be an investment podcast. I feel like we have all the right <laughs> ideas. <laughs> maybe not. Um, this next story, um, do you want to read it? Sure. Uh, so... Microsoft reportedly interested in a $10 billion Discord buyout bid. This is via Eurogamer. So much money. God so damn. much money. Like an uh, unimaginable amount of money. Uh, Microsoft is one of several companies in talks to acquire Discord. A pair of new reports have claimed. Both VentureBeat and Bloomberg reported overnight on buyout discussions with Discord, or within Discord rather, with any sale expected to be worth $10 billion. <laughs> One unnamed company is said to be in final negotiations over a deal, VentureBeat claimed, although no deal has yet been signed, again, as of Tuesday. Um, alternatively, Discord may ultimately decide to go public, uh, Bloomberg's report suggests. Its sources claimed that there was no deal that was, quote, imminent. Discord continues to grow in popularity, but is yet to turn an annual profit. The desktop app and web-based chat platform is enormously popular among video game fans, but is free to use with limited extra features available to those who purchase its $10 a month Nitro subscription. Uh, Microsoft's interest in Discord comes as little surprise as it is reminiscent of the company's $8.5 billion purchase of Skype back in 2011. I would say Discord infinitely better than Skype, but... (laughs) Uh, $10 billion is still... Holy shit. So much money to me. I don't know. Okay. This is why we're not an investment podcast. <laughs> I couldn't even tell you whether or not that's a good deal. That's so much fun. I mean, to me, if they're not even growing a, uh, or throwing a pro- an annual a profit, profit. Yeah, I was like, growing, yeah. throwing, yeah, turning an annual profit. Um, yeah, I mean, fuck a $10 billion. If this is true, like, that's so much fucking money and good for Discord. But it's interesting to think, are they going to go public or are they going to consider this deal? I don't know. I feel like if they, if they have yet to turn any profits, they have a better they should go for the deal like going public and never turning a profit for your shareholders is not going to go over super well that's a good point i feel again i'm not an, i'm not an investor i'm not super smart with these money things but to me not making a profit equals angry shareholders i am pretty sure uh so <laughs> <laughs> i mean you're not wrong i guess i was surprised to learn that they weren't turning an annual profit but now that i think about it yeah how do they monetize and i guess it's this nitro subscription it's which just nitro I didn't and even nitro know they to had. me is too ex- oh i knew that it existed mm. but i was like i'm not paying ten dollars a month for this it has nothing that i would really need or want um i discord free is honestly too good <laughs> so like they they do need to be a little bit more inventive on monetization if they wanted to sustain in that way or if microsoft is literally just kind of looking to buy for the tech Mm -hmm. um that's Mm -hmm. something else that they can do uh so i mean you never know yeah i never used discord before the pandemic hit i just we use skype and we use (laughs) for the podcast we use skype for a while and then we use Facebook Messenger, and then we use Google Hangouts. Like we've tried a little bit of everything, but from what I hear yeah. from other people who podcast, is Discord is just the way to go. And not only that, it's great for community. You have all those little chat rooms, and so it's been a fun little learning venture for me. I guess where I'm wondering is Microsoft, like you're saying, they would be interested in the tech, and then assuming integrate it. Speaking from like an Xbox perspective, into their Xbox console and their Xbox chat, is that how you envision this would work? Yeah, you could do that. Um, there's also Microsoft in general doesn't just do gaming, right? right. Um, so if they could integrate the tech into more other areas, honestly, like if it overtook Skype, yeah, <laughs> like there's the, you know there's different ways. I don't know if it would you know Kirby into the others and just absorb them all Ooh, or what. I like but that. Yeah, um, I, I imagine that they have a plan for it, but I, I couldn't accurately tell you what it is but i the, somebody mentioned this like i don't remember where I, I saw it but they were like "Ooh, it would be awesome if then your xbox ultimate basically gave you nitro yeah uh, that would, and i was oh. like yes 
that would be cool. That makes I would sense. like that. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, keep beefing up that Game Pass Ultimate subscription service and just keep keep going. And, it's, and it is interesting looking at these two stories, the one about the PlayStation stores and this one. It just really goes to show you how different Microsoft and Sony are kind of going down these different paths. You know, in the sense that you're looking at Microsoft maybe buying this Discord, just this little, this little program called Discord, uh, which, you know, like in integrating it and maybe turning it into part of their Game Pass Ultimate. And then like there's another bomb offering and how Microsoft is so much more gung ho on backwards compatibility and preserving the older games. And Sony's like, eh, we don't really need it. Like, let's just toss it to the side. It's just uh, it's interesting. But I mean we've seen this path like for me before our very eyes since the last generation of consoles but i digress anyway like good for discord either way it sounds like you're not a shit creep without a paddle anymore it sounds like there's a lot of benjamins in your near future and for that i congratulate you tip of the hat yeah good for you friends all right now on to well i was gonna say actual news but this is yet again part of another rumor but again where there's smoke there's fire and summer i think there's enough fire here to to have some tasty s'mores tell me about the fire i'll tell you all about the fire i'd rather talk about s'mores because those are so fucking good s'mores are delicious Mm, okay wait a question now how do you like your marshmallow on your s'more i want it mostly burnt or like not burnt burnt but like i I need the texture of the marshmallow to change so i need the outside to be crisp and the inside to be like liquid Okay, so do you want it to look like it's a meteorite crashing into Earth before you cool it off? So it's all like I want it to slide on. off. I want it to like slide off the skewer, like slough off in a gooey, ooey mess. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, because the, that by that point the skin, if you will, I will is like nice and crispy. Yeah, and then it melts the chocolate, and then and like, then it melts the chocolate. Mm-hmm. <coughs> mm-hmm. Sorry, going through puberty. All right, let's get on to this next story. All right, yeah, so. We have another Nintendo Switch Pro, new Super Nintendo Switch, whatever the fuck you want to call this rumored console. A story about it via Bloomberg called Nintendo to use new NVIDIA graphics chip in 2021 Switch upgrade. So Nintendo plans to adopt an upgraded NVIDIA Corp chip with better graphics and processing for a new Switch model planned for the... for the year-end shopping season, according to people familiar with the matter, the new. I love it. I love that <laughs> statement. I love. I love the phrase "people familiar with the matter," and especially when it's like said the people. I love it. It just yeah. makes me laugh. The new Switch iteration will support Nvidia's Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, a novel rendering technology that uses artificial intelligence to deliver higher fidelity graphics more efficiently. That will allow the console, which is also set for an OLED display upgrade, to reproduce game visuals at 4K quality when plugged into a TV, said the people (laughs) who asked not to be identified because the plan is not public. The U.S. I don't want to get fired, they said. Pretty much. We are the people. We will remain the anonymous people. The U.S. company's new chipset will also bring a better CPU and increased memory. DLSS support will require the new code to be added to games, so it'll primarily be used to improve graphics on upcoming titles, said the people, (laughs) including multiple game developers. NVIDIA and Nintendo representatives declined to comment. Surprise, surprise. Analysts expect the new Switch to be offered at a higher price than the current model's $299, a level unchanged since the Switch's initial release in 2017. Bloomberg Intelligence's Matthew Cantor... Canterman for season for a season increase as of much as one hundred dollars. Quote three forty nine ninety nine will increase the value proposition of the device, but I still think Nintendo can drive demand at three ninety nine ninety nine. He said. Well, well, how do you feel about this Nintendo news? Does it does it flip your skirt? Does it sharpen your pencil? Do you care? No, because for me, I think the Switch does what it needs to well enough. Um, mm. I can see if you were like, I have a Switch and this is my one console being a little bit more into having 4K on your TV or whatever, but like, I never plug my Switch into a TV, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I had the original Vita with an OLED and it was really nice. Yeah. Is it $100 extra nice? Is it a whole, buy a whole new console nice? For me, no. Yeah, that's an interesting but, perspective because for me, it would 100% hands down be a no-brainer. I would buy the shit out of this. Um, I have been playing my Switch a little bit more lately with Bravely Default and Story of Seasons. And I think that I'm starting to see the Switch really show its age a little bit. The textures mm-hmm. on a TV just aren't smooth. They're very jaggy, like games that should run smoothly. And I know this isn't always the console's fault. 
but it doesn't. And I'm just ready for something new, not to mention my left Joy-Con is like kind of wobbly and it's all scratched up from where and what I missed inserting the switch into the dock correctly. All my bad. Like, I get it. Anyway, hands down, like I'm ready for, I'm definitely ready for a new switch. Um, it's been interesting though to follow this story for God. I feel like what now been years at this point. It's been a, it's been a bit. It's been a while because just not that long ago, Nintendo President Shuntaro Furukawa said that it will not be announcing a new version quote anytime soon. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> Wait, when did they say that? When did you say? I that? think that was just a few months ago. I don't even think it was. Oh. It was February first. I mean, it was last soon. month. <laughs> so, oh my god. <laughs> so I mean, here's the thing: like maybe they're not going to be announcing this anytime soon. Unless it's anytime soon, end of the year. Right. I mean, that's it. That's not anytime soon. And we didn't talk about this last week, but I thought this was also an interesting report from Bloomberg that Nintendo is expecting to ship 250 million units of software in the next fiscal year, which runs April 2021 to March 2022. And <clears throat> these are Bloomberg's words, and they're expecting these sales due to a series of marquee game releases, stronger blockbuster software lineup, and new hardware. So 250 million units of software, that's a huge number. For comparison, in this current fiscal year, which includes games like Animal Crossing and whatnot, Nintendo's expected to see 205 million units shipped. Other than that, <clears throat> their next biggest year was from 2008 with the Wii U, where they shipped 204.6 million units. So they're saying, like, we're going to have 250 million units. So it makes you wonder, like, what are you guys bold. plotting? You know, like, what's bold, up your sleeve? Bold, bold. Gold. gold. <laughs> no, I said bold. Oh, but I also said gold. gold. I was like, gold? Are, no. are they Scrooge McDuck? I just mean, like, that's a bold <laughs> it is. prediction if you're saying the top that they've ever done is 205. Yeah. So that's what they're saying. It's pretty big. So, what we know, I have a little list here of like what we know is coming in the near ish future. So, we have new Pokemon Snap, Mario Golf, yeah. Skyward Sword HD, Monster Hunter Rise, Breath of the Wild 2, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. And also then you have Pokemon Legends Arceus, then maybe some Bayonetta, some Metroid, some Splatoon. We don't know when those are coming. And again, like... <laughs> Bayonetta. I know. Isn't it so sad? It's like, Bayonetta, where are you, baby girl? Oh, Bayonetta, what happened? Did you get lost in your hair? What happened? <laughs> get lost in your hair. I just had this image of like this like rat king of black hair. and Poor Bayonetta is just like strangled and like, oh, I can't get... She's like, help. I need a hairdresser. <laughs> So, again, like, the fiscal year they're talking, April 2021, which is, like, in a week, through March 2022. So, there's clearly some, I mean, imagine there's going to be another Mario game in there somewhere. That means something, like. It's probably a good guess. Yeah. So, I mean, they have, they're, they're, they're plotting some shit, Steimer. And, uh, I mean, I'd like to no. know what it is. The one thing that would get me, and this is the dumbest reason. That's okay. the dumb, it, But the new Switch, if they had a cute colorway or a cute branded one because the animal crossing switch is the one that i have now mm -hmm. and i never thought i would care to replace the other switch because the other switch i had was just fine it was doing the same thing but you know what i saw that green and i saw that blue and i said i must have it so if there's some really cute colors i may be inclined to buy a new switch okay there you go she doesn't even care about the games ladies and gentlemen she just wants don't I like aesthetics. <laughs> she just, what's your like design, your perfect dream design of a Switch? Oh, I don't know. See, the thing is that I, I didn't know I wanted that Animal Crossing Switch until yeah. I saw it. Okay, so you don't know what you want just like, yet. I know it know. when I see it. Mm -hmm. You'll know it. You'll know I it. I like soothing color palettes. I feel like the Animal Crossing one's very soothing. Like the pastel -y kind of colors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah. pastel -y. Yeah, I'm with you. That's why I don't like getting the bright neon joy cons i know some people love that but for me it's too much of a distraction I'd i love the boring. look of them mm -hmm. but i yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't want them on my actual switch i just love the way they look and like photos and the way they photo look. Shoot, you can get a switch anyway. purely for instagram purposes timer it'll be great precisely if i used instagram more then that would maybe be a good purchase but yeah, i do not i don't either I actually deleted it off my phone and it's been great Ooh, nice. Thanks. Anyway, would you like to take this next one? Sure. Speaking of Nintendo, uh, Nintendo and Niantic announced a new partnership starting with Pikmin AR game. This comes to us from IGN, my old place of work. 
one of the many of my old places at work. <laughs> um, Niantic, the developers of Pokemon Go, are teaming up again with Nintendo on more AR-based games, or rather, more AR games based on Nintendo franchises, starting with Pikmin. Niantic's blog post announced a new partnership between the AR developer and Nintendo, where the two companies will jointly develop mobile titles using Niantic's AR technology and Nintendo's characters. The Pikmin game, then, sounds like the first of these joint partnership games, and Niantic says it will be released later this year. Quote, the app will include gameplay activities to encourage walking and make walking more <laughs> delightful, Niantic says in his blog post. This will be the first title created by our Tokyo studio since it was established in April 2018. Niantic says it will share more news about its apps in the future, though who knows which Nintendo franchise will get the AR treatment next. Uh, and if you want to, like, give these people your information, apparently you can sign up for updates at NianticLabs.com. Slash uh, new app sign up. <laughs> new app sign up. You'll get the... You'll get the scoops faster than anybody else. I love how they're like, walking sucks. Walking is one of the worst and most boring activities you could possibly do. You clearly need something else while you're walking. You need motivation. I thought that was like pretty fucking wholesome. Yeah, it makes activities to encourage walking and making walking more delightful. I love it. Actually, yeah, because when Pokemon Go came out, I got out a lot. I was walking so much. I lost like 10 pounds that summer just from all of the walking I was doing outside. And it was really fun. It was a really cool cultural moment. But I mean, cool. This is Pikmin's never really been my thing. I've never actually played a Pikmin game before. So I can't like super relate. But all I know is I looked at how much money Pokemon Go has made since they launched and they have made $4.2 billion in revenue. That's a lot of cheddar. You know, Cyber, I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, to, to, to toot our own horn here a little bit, being one of the top video game podcasts and being in an industry that just makes so much fucking money, I feel like you and I should be, you know, rolling in some mansions or some shit. You know what I mean? You want to Scrooge McDuckett? Yeah, I want to Scrooge McDuckett. Like, yeah. I, I wish that's how it works. But that's not how it works, ladies and gentlemen. You can cover a multi-billion, hundred billion dollar industry and... And make peanuts. Yeah. But that's okay. We do it because we love it. We have so much more news to talk about. But before we do that, let me tell you that this week's episode of What's Good Games is brought to you by Logitech. So, like I've said last week and the week before, and I'll say it again and again, we love Logitech products here at What's Good Games. Now, I've been giving my Logitech G733 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming headset a lot of love lately because, as I've mentioned again, I'm on a Nintendo Switch kick. I played most of my 80 hours of Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town with this headset, so I think that speaks to how comfortable this thing really is. This headset features 2.4 gigahertz of wireless connectivity, front-facing dual zone light sync RGB, blue voice mic technology, Pro G audio drivers, and multiple colorways to choose from. You also have total freedom with up to a 20 meters wireless range with light speed wireless. Keep playing with 29 hours of battery life and play wirelessly with PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 with stereo sound. You can personalize your headset lighting with front facing dual zone light sync RGB lighting. The reversible suspension headband is designed for ultimate comfort during long play sessions like my 80 hours in Story of Seasons. Each G733 colorway has its own unique headband design as well. And also, incredibly important, the headset is incredibly comfy. The G733 has soft dual layer memory foam that conforms to your head and contour. I did it again. I said contours. It is contours. I know, but I started saying like contours and then I, I got it right. And so oh. <laughs> every week, it's the contour journey, friends. Thanks for sticking with me. Contours around the jaw for a better seal, reduce stress points, and delivers long, longer lasting comfort. And it's available in multiple colorways, each with its own vibrant reversible headband and corresponding ear pads. So for a limited time, Logitech G is offering our listeners express shipping at logitechg.com. Use code What's Good Games Free Ship 326 for express shipping today. That's express shipping for all Logitech G products with promo code What's Good Games Free Ship 326. Hurry now since the promo ends in three days. All right, baby girl, we got some yeah. more news to talk about. Do you want to indulge we sure me do. and read this? Do you want to? Do you want me to read this so that you can grunt? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so Thanks. I want. 
everybody at home listening or watching, guess what it's about? Oh. You know, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, Resident Evil's <laughs> 25th anniversary kicks off with a fresh look at Resident Evil Village mm. and much more. When I was a kid, we always used to call Value Village Value, Value Village. Huh. Um, Never heard that it one. It sounded fancier. It does. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's official. Resident Evil is 25 years old. What a baby. Uh, that's old enough to rent a car without an additional fee. That's true. Uh, but more importantly, it's a huge landmark for our beloved survival horror franchise. Today is just the start of the celebration, too. We have lots to look forward to over the next few weeks, and here's just a slice of what to expect. First up, we have a major announcement to kick things off. A new Resident Evil showcase will be dropping this April. I already was like, when is April? I'm like, oh, yeah, it's not that far. <laughs> it's like a week away. <laughs> it's like a week. Uh, we don't want to spoil any surprises, so we'll leave it to all of you to speculate on what this upcoming presentation might contain. Uh, I feel like they should probably say a little bit more than that, but that's okay. Mm, we'll yeah, that's, that's a, that's a bold-ass, uh, you know, that you know what happens. Like you, want the, you, you don't want the rumor mill to go off on its own. In fact, that is a bad thing because um, expectation is very important. Yep. Not the only thing, though. So Resident Evil Reverse is getting an open beta as well. If you missed the closed beta or simply want to know what the game's all about, this is new open beta will be coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Steam from April 7th to April 11th. If you still have the beta download from the closed beta test, all you got to do is download an automatic update when it goes live, and you are all set. If you're just jumping in, you got to preload that bitch starting <laughs> April 5th. They didn't say that. That wasn't in their official blog. I said that. Um... We're also happy to confirm that Resident Evil Village will be launching on Stadia day and date with other platforms on May 7th, 2021. I mean, it's almost my birthday, but not quite my birthday, which I don't care about this game. So I was gonna say, happy it, birthday it, to me. I got a big old vampire lady to talk to. Mm. Um, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard Gold Edition is also coming to Stadia and will be available for free with Stadia Pro beginning on April 1st or as a standalone purchase. And there's like more information about that if you really care you can go to the capcom blog and i'm sure that they will tell you all about it they so will. Brittany, oh how twisted are your panties oh they're so twisted girl but they're not twisted enough to where it's painful it's like twisted That's enough good. where it's like okay i can nice I, comfort I, with. yeah yeah like i can feel that they're twisted and it's so like i'm on high alert and i'm aware of my surroundings but i'm not like super annoyed what'd you alert it. what'd you alert <laughs> what'd you alert pull that bitch um yeah so obviously i had the honor of hosting the last showcase it's exciting that there's another one coming and yeah it, it's funny that you you brought that up because that was my thought too like er, especially now with all the expectations that we've seen not being set properly and then not being met you know in terms of fan yeah. reaction and whatnot um it's fun that they're saying hey go speculate i think that leaves the door open for a lot of um a lot of hype also a lot of potential disappointment who could say yeah that's my worry is well you obviously don't need to give us an outline of everything you're right. gonna cover i think giving one or two nuggets to give a direction for people would be helpful because again i just think even what sometimes when expectations are set properly you know the good old internet really just likes to spin shit out of absolutely nothing and while they're making those webs you as a <laughs> comms team are just like well well they aren't getting that and they aren't getting that and they aren't getting like <laughs> people right? just make things up um so it's a i feel like it's a bit dangerous to be like go ahead and speculate yeah, it's it's hard because you want to get so hyped about it because if you think about what's been rumored, and by rumored I mean what's more fans have been wanting, something with Resident Evil 4, they've been wanting some sort of old school compilation of titles to re-release on one of the consoles. There's so much that people could ask for because this IP goes back 25 years. You know, there's so much there, but we will just have to wait and see. I did think this was interesting that regarding the Stadia version, so to, this comes from The Verge. So to encourage folks to buy the Stadia version, Google will throw in a free Stadia premiere kit to anyone who pre-orders Resident Evil Village before May 21st. That's my birthday. The promotion is available for both the standard and deluxe editions of Resident Evil, which cost $60 and $70. Normally priced at $100, Google Stadia Premiere Edition features a white Stadia controller, a Chromecast Ultra, and for new, years, new users, a one-month trial subscription to Stadia's Pro Tier service. So they're like, yo, pre-order this game. We're going to give you a $100 way to play it. It's kind of. That pretty much is just like 
for the love of God, please buy this thing. <laughs> please. They have been you were already going to buy the game anyway. Don't you want? I mean, part of me was like, mm, the Chromecast Ultra. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can get it for 60 bucks. But I just... can just, yeah, I'm like, I can just get a Chromecast Ultra. <laughs> Snyder, don't you want to get Resident Evil Village and get stepped on by the big vampire lady? Um, I'm going to just wait for the internet to show me the bits that are safe for the me bits. to watch. Like the literal bits. Well, oh, God. Or the literal bits, sure. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, but it was. <laughs> gotcha, it <worked>. gotcha. <laughs> anyway, exciting shit. Let's all stay tuned. I'm sure it will be a fun time indeed. So, Speaking of a fun time. Yeah, uh, a fun and anxious time and a butt-clenching time. So The Last of Us HBO show season one adapts the first game, but will, quote, deviate greatly in some episodes. So The Last of Us on HBO will directly lift dialogue from the original game, says executive producer Neil Druckmann. This comes from IGN, by the way. But we'll see some episodes, quote, deviate greatly from the events we've played previously. Speaking to IGN during South by Southwest 2021, The Last of Us game director and show executive producer Neil Druckmann spoke about his and showrunner Craig Mazin's approach to adapting the acclaimed original game. Quote, we talked at length that season one of the show is going to be the first game, Druckmann explained, noting that for him and Mazin... The ph philosophical underpinnings of the story were essential, were the essential thing to get right about the adaptation. Quote, as far as the superficial things, like should a character wear the same plaid shirt or their same red shirt, they might or might not appear in it. That's way less important to us than getting the core of who these people are and the core of their journey. And while Druckmann could not, of course, reveal too much about the team's exact plans for how some of the series will play out in comparison to the game, he did explain that viewers were, will certainly recognize some dialogue and be surprised by large parts of episodes. Quote, things sometimes stay pretty close. It's funny to see my dialogue there from the games in HBO scripts. And sometimes they deviate greatly to much better effect because we are dealing with a different medium, he said. For example, in the game, there's so much action that you have to train the player about mechanics. You have to be more you have to have more violence and more spectacle to some degree than you would need on a TV show because you don't need to train people on how to use a gun. So that's something that's been really different and HBO's been great in pushing us to move away from the hardcore action and focus more on the drama of the character. Some of my favorite episodes so far have deviated greatly from the story and I can't wait for people to see them. I also just saw the first prosthetic test for the clicker, and it's awesome. It's so rad to see this thing come to physical life, he said. Yeah, that sounds terrifying. Um, yeah. Clicker Nick. But <laughs> that's also terrifying. I think it's an interesting point of some of this stuff obviously needs to change because it's a video game. So, for instance, I actually wonder if they'll ever even touch on Ellie not being able to swim. Um, oh. because that was just a mechanic, right? That was literally a game mechanic that they had, and they were like, what can we do here? Oh, she does not swim. Okay, like, oh, put her on a raft and I fucking bury her across that. the way so that the player has something to do for a few minutes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, So there's just, like, little things like that yeah. that I think are, are funny. Um, And they might do, like, a nod to them, but obviously wouldn't be as much of a an issue in a TV show as it is in a video game. And I also agree, like, I feel like the show will be stronger because of not needing to have so much violence in it, in the sense that I often felt sometimes with The Last of Us, the gameplay, I don't want to say it got in the way, but it definitely detracted from the messages that they were trying to send. Totally. Because if you're murdering, like, mass amounts of people, I was just kind of like, at some point, it feels like you run out of folks to kill. I don't know. Yeah, you're not um, wrong because it's okay to take a break, you know, in that pacing of you don't have to try to be a, quote, video game all the time. You can have those moments where you're not always trying to kill waves and waves of enemies, right? Yeah. Mm, exactly. Yeah. No, this is uh, this is interesting, and I think this is I think this is great, personally. Um, I think whenever you – I mean, I'm glad they're kind of clarifying this ahead of time to set expectations because I think when you say, you know, we're adapting the first game – but there's definitely be some things that are different. That's important because the new Resident Evil movie just got a new title, a new official title. It's called Resident Evil: Welcome to Raccoon City, and they're making it seem very much so that it's going to like stick to the first and second game, like by the book almost. And I feel like you know when you do that, people's expectations of what it's going to be are going to be like you know very very high. But when you're coming out front with like this HBO show, The Last of Us, and saying some parts are going to be different. 
I think that's really important to set those expectations. And I think IP translates into to film and TV series way better if it is different. Because, like, no one's ever going to be Joel. No one's ever going to be Ellie. Like, the voice actors aren't going to be there. And so you have to kind of have those differences, I think, to really kind of set it aside and be like, this isn't the game. This is not. This is something different. Yeah, these are different interpretations of these characters. Um, and I actually do think that it will it would be better if they were costumed differently to kind of help with exactly. that. I know people will initially be mad because, of course, they will be. Yeah. Um, but I think you need to develop them and let them be, like, who they are as, like, not only Druckmann and these new writers with HBO, but also the actors being able to bring their own perspective to the situation. So I'm really curious, and I'm very excited to see this. I think it'll be great. Um, and more, please. Give us more fun, cool video game content. We touched Doesn't on this. need to be one for one. It's true. We touched on this a little bit. But DK2112 sent in a question at patreon.com slash what's good games and asked on the, well, not really an ask. It was more of a statement. But on The Last of Us, am I the only one who doesn't want it to be a Joel and Ellie story? I love that game so much. I think it's just not going to compare. The bookends of that story is just perfect. Again, like. I mean, it, it is a Joel and Ellie story, though, yeah. or at least it appears to be. Um that being said, I think it can be a different Joel and Ellie story. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be the exact same story. Um, and I don't think it's going to detract from the game whatsoever because the game still exists and you can still enjoy the game and appreciate that for what it was. And I do think that the games do some really powerful stuff. And I imagine that the show will also do some really powerful stuff. Um, so, like, they should be complementary and not detractive. Exactly, Simon. Look at you in that logic dropping. Logic dropping. That just sounds like a dropping, like fecal matter. And that's not what I was going for. <laughs> I made that weird. Less sexy. <laughs> um, yeah. And I also think, again, like we had been saying, just set your expectations that it's going to be a little different, but they can coexist and it can be just as powerful. Like Steimer said, listen to Steimer. She knows what she's talking about. Not always. Asterisk. Please do not listen to Steimer. <laughs> but maybe the Steimer, if she comes out with an investment podcast and I'm like her co-host, maybe don't listen to us on that one because, you know. Yeah. You Maybe know. if you like your money, you know, don't <laughs> listen to that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. We have a few in case you missed it. Gotham Knights has been delayed until 2022 via the Gotham Knights Twitter account. Quote, Gotham Knights will now launch worldwide in 2022. We are giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. Thank you to our amazing fans for your tremendous support of Gotham Knights. We look forward to showcasing more of the game in the coming months. Not surprising. Shit happens. <laughs> here's an <laughs> i love Samer's comment on this next little in case you missed it reminder friends that mario dies on march 31st and so Samer has a little comment next to it in the google doc that says what the fuck is this sentence because <laughs> i'm like what do you like what like why would you be like mario die a reminder because it's like so the reminder it feels like a cheery thing you're like reminder that mario dies on march 31st and you're like <laughs> What? <laughs> okay. Mario so, dies? Mario can't die? He's a cartoon. No. So it's the internet being the internet, and we're all being really silly. And so on March 31st, here's what's happening, friends. Super Mario 3D All-Stars will be pulled from the eShop and physical stores. Super Mario Bros. 35 will no longer be playable. You will no longer be able to buy the Super Mario Game & Watch system. Super Mario Maker on the Wii U will cease level sharing. And 35th anniversary products of the Mario franchise will be pulled from Nintendo stores. So wait, why? <laughs> so Mario had this big celebration, right? Of his 35th anniversary. He's blah, blah, blah. And remember when Nintendo did their th Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which has, what is it? Super Mario 64, Galaxy, and Sunshine as one. But they said they're going to be taking those off the shelves because it's just meant to be a temporary celebration of sorts. The idea is, I think what everyone's reading behind the lines, between the lines, is that they're going to sell these individually going forward and make mm. more money off of them. Money, money, money. Money. Yeah, so um, everyone's just kind of giving Nintendo a really hard time for this because it kind of is a wild decision that I'm not quite understanding. But again, comes down to our money song that we sang not that long ago, Baby Girl. Everyone just wants to And you know, money. I mean, Mario's just like, apparently dead. He's going to die on the 31st. I mean, he's really not. <laughs> Jeff Grubb has a list of upcoming um, 
summer events and whatnot, and it, he calls it the execution of Mario on the 31st. So it's just the internet being the internet, kind of giving Nintendo some shit, but Nintendo's like, we don't give a fuck. We're They're still like, we do don't it. care. We're still taking it away from you. Yep. Because we're Nintendo and we fucking can get wrecked. <laughs> That's like I feel like that's what Nintendo like Miyamoto must sing that song to himself all day. <laughs> I love it. That should be their new like commercial for Nintendo. Fuck the cute little Switch shit. Let's get real. Um, and finally, Xbox Live is rebranding to the Xbox Network. So, quotes: Xbox Network refers to the underlying Xbox Online service, which was updated in the Microsoft Services Agreement. A Microsoft spokesperson told The Verge in a statement. The update from Xbox Live to Xbox Network is intended to distinguish the underlying service from Xbox Live Gold memberships. So, what? You're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have this is how I'm reading it Xbox Network, Xbox Live Gold. Like, the, that's going to be. Yeah, the new norm, and then obviously you're gonna have your your game passes and your game pass ultimates. It's just another confusing naming. This uh, feels like an unnecessary move. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, are you a fan of the X- Xbox Live? You think they should just keep it? Of course I am, because I used to work on those accounts, and oh. I'm very nostalgic for the name. <laughs> well, sorry, you're not allowed to change it. Sorry, bitch, you gotta get used to Xbox Network now. Going forward, I mean, when they first they changed Microsoft Game Studios, when I was like, okay, fine, this makes sense. Now they're changing Xbox Live. Nay. Although I do wonder, actually, mm, it, with, if you pair it with the spicy Discord news. Oh. Oh, shit. Mm. Could make sense. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, who knows? People will be making moves. All I know, Microsoft, is if you're looking to acquire a small little podcast about video games, you have lots of We will of take money. $1 billion. Like, it's so much cheaper than Discord. So much cheaper. And listen, if you want to bypass Simer and make a private deal with me, I'll take $1 million. I'll take $100 million. I'll take, you know. Wait, you just, you just up yourself. I know. Yourself. I know. See, this is why I don't negotiate. It's because I just fuck that <laughs> this all This is up. why you shouldn't have gone around me, Brittany. I Stick know. Damn it. I need you. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> now I've tarnished the business relationship. Now you know my true intentions. <laughs> I'm fucked. She's like, I will take whatever scraps you give please. me. Please. <laughs> Let's just go with it. Oh, my Not God. Not a million dollars with scraps <laughs> by any means. but <laughs> no, no, we'll take it. It's fine. Just take plus or minus a few zeros. We won't complain. Uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to tell you all about our hands-on time with things like video games and books. If you're Steiner, <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second segment of the What's Good Games podcast. Here is where we talk about what we've been playing and about any preview events we may or may not have been to digitally because we don't go to those physically anymore. Sigh. But first, I want to let you know that this segment is brought to you by HelloFresh. So, what is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable, and that's why it's America's number one meal kit. With 25 recipes to choose from each week, there is something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. So Jason and I have been doing HelloFresh for, God, I feel like a few years now, and he he really gets off on this. He loves to set aside a time timer where he and I just sit and we go through the meals that we're going to order for like the next month. And he likes to turn it into a whole event. He's like, time to grab your phone and pick our meals. And I'm like, okay, cool. But it's a good thing he does because more oftentimes than not, we pick the same meals. So we try to keep things like varied, you know, so we don't pick the same yeah. stuff. Not yeah. that I don't complain. Their pepper- Variety is the spice of life. It is. Their peppercorn steak is something we always get dupes of. The lemony chive chicken is another one. We just had these Philly cheese steak sandwiches like – it's good. Ooh, and here's the thing, friends, good. is I can't cook, but I can make these. So if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. So HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need with customizable orders every week. Like I was just saying, you can easily change your delivery days or food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. 
So you can go to HelloFresh.com slash What's Good 12 and use code What's Good 12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash What's Good 12 and use code What's Good 12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, baby girl, we've been playing some mm. shit. I, I yeah, not a lot, but a little. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Do you want to tell um, me all about your time in Outriders, riding the outs? I have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So I, I definitely talked about this on the show on a prior episode, but over the weekend, I was just like, you know, I don't really feel like playing anything, but I feel like if I'm going to play something, I want to play with friends. So I texted Jackie and I said would you want to hop into Outriders with me? And she said yes. So um, I I played with her for a few hours. We basically got my character, which is a Devastator, which is the tank yes. class, up to level 7, which is the level cap for the demo. Also hit World Tier 5, which is the level cap for the demo. Um, didn't hit the cap for, like, money or all that other stuff that you can transfer over to the game when it launches. But I feel pretty good about my starting point and um, I'm excited. Like I'm excited for this game to come out finally because we played through a couple of the things over and over again to grind a little bit for mm-hmm. more gear. Um, and I was like, I just want, I just want some more content, please. But I will say I'm still so so pleased with how player friendly this game is. Um, not only do they give you free, like the skill tree is a free respec, and you can do it whenever you want, oh. like that. And when I think back to December and my pain with Cyberpunk, who told me that even though this was a single player game, that I could get fucked and I needed to spend a million dollars in the game in order to respect myself. And even then I couldn't respect all of myself in a game about respecting, remodifying yourself constantly with Mm. cyberware, which made zero sense to me. Right. Um, Like I was just so, I'm like, oh my God, this is just so nice. Like not only can you do that, you... Um, you know, you can change your looks at any time, which is really nice. Partying up was super easy. Loot was really nice. So only one of you needs to, um, there's like harvesting ores and there's loot. And you can, when one of you does it, like the other person just walks over and picks up the thing. Um, one person opens the chest, the stuff all pops out. You can go pick up your goods or you can set it to um, automatically loot everything. You just need to go into the settings and have it adjust the auto loot rarity level so i sent mine down to common so it picks up everything nice. uh, but if you were like really far into the game and you didn't want just crap anymore you could just tilt that up so there's a lot of really good customization options in the game like that uh and i'm just i'm excited for it the one critique i would have which is really not a fair critique because we have such a small sliver of the game was just the very intro of it is super brown it looks very much like old video games yeah. because the palette is just so bland. But if you look at the trailer and at some of the places it could go, there are more varied environments out there. Hopefully um, we just haven't really seen them yet. So yeah, no, I'm totally with you. And I loved how when the demo actually opens up, it's all like green and lush and beautiful and like these lovely waterfalls. And then you see the shit and that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. So I remember when you and and was it you and Andrea that played it way back in the day, or was it just Andrea? Yes. Okay. Yeah, me and Andrea played. Yeah, it. Yeah. Um. That was one of the things that you both had said. It's like it just looks like an old brown game. It's like yeah, great. Like yeah. we're so past that. But I agree. I think. Uh, now here's my question for you: Are you into the story at all, or are you kind of like eh, it is what it is? I think the story is is like mild. Is it interesting enough? It's definitely interesting enough to pull me through. I think it does what it needs to do. Um. I don't think it would be like the world's most engrossing story of all time, but what it does really well is it does gameplay really well and it does partying really well. So mm-hmm. that's all you really need to do if you have a group of friends you like to play with, especially being crossplay. Um, I think that that's great. And I also know that this is now going to be part of Xbox Game Pass. So yeah. you already have an easy way in. So I think, I just think it's awesome. And I'm very, I'm just excited. I just want to play more. Because the Devastator is so satisfying. It's so good. I love the move. I can't remember. Is it Earthquake where you kind of pull back and then you can just. No, Earthquake is one where you just like 
shoot an earthquake basically through the ground oh, at them. Well, that's, that's, um, you're that thinking of the one where you basically... <laughs> so Jackie had not seen... I forget what the move is, but I don't know which one you're talking about. Um, it's this one. So Jackie was playing the pyromancer, okay. um, and she sees me do the the move where you basically fly into the air, select a target, and slam yeah, down into that's them. that's the one. And she was like, holy shit, you just yeeted yourself across the map. <laughs> I was like, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And I think that's, that's what I a love. very apt description. It's so perfect. And that's what I love about the Devastator, too, is it doesn't play like a normal tank. I know we talked about this. I don't know what, what week it was. Yeah, at some point. <laughs> at some point in our lives, we talked about it. But it has those fun moves that you don't see. And Jason usually plays like the cool mage that has all the fun abilities and whatnot. And I'm usually the face tank, but he was also the pyromancer. And he was very jealous of my moveset. I said, yeah, that's right. Bow to me, bitch. Yeah. Be jealous. It's a sexy moveset, um, especially, again, like you said, for a tank. So I played a paladin as a tank in World of Warcraft. Like, none of the moves were that cool. It's all like taunt and then put up <laughs> armor and keep hold aggro. <laughs> it's uh. not the most exciting thing. But I just got um, bullet shield where basically oh, you put up kind of a biotic that. looking shield it absorbs all of the bullets and then it fires them back at whoever's in front of you that was such a good the one move. thing yeah right it's super satisfying the one thing that jackie and i need to coordinate a little better on is by the time my the shield had absorbed all the bullets she just did a move with fire and killed everybody right in front oh. of me and i was like wait no my moment <laughs> My moment to shine. Yeah. It was a bit anticlimactic, but <laughs> I forgot about that move because I also, when I played the demo, I got to seven in world tier five, which can kick your ass if you're not anticipating it. Um, but yeah, I love that bullet one because yeah, it absorbs all the bullets and then you just fucking like, I don't know. I was gonna say eat yeah. the bullets, but I don't know if that's what the cool kids would kind of. It. I mean, yeah, yeah it's just pew pew. Yeah. yeah, you get them back. Yeah, no, I'm happy. I'm really excited for this game. It comes out in a week. I know. A week and a day That's crazy. from when, when we're recording right now. But, yeah, I'm really excited Even for it, too. Even less if you're listening to this show. There you go. I think I'm really into the story more than most people are. I don't know why. For some reason, it's just scratching an itch. I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. What do you mean you try to go to this this planet and then some shit hit the fan? And now it's not what you see. Now it's overrun by all these bandits. But we will see. I just wish the codex, the font needs to be bigger on those bad boys because it's so teeny tiny. And I have not opened the codex. I know you haven't. <laughs> I know. My poor Steimer. She's like, I don't fucking care enough. I don't open codexes. If you don't tell it to me in game, I don't give a fuck. I will say, I'm not going to say what the mission was, but I this game does also have good comedic timing. Mm. Um, there are some times where I just little, I laughed out loud. I was just pleasantly surprised I at agree. the way that they did mission structure. And I really like so. the voice actress too for the... Um, Female Outrider. I yeah. think she's, she's good. Yeah. She has fun delivery. All right. Well, we will be talking more about Outriders, I'm sure, in the in the coming weeks. But I have been playing more of It Takes Two. So I previewed this on What's Good. Oh, man. <laughs> Sometime. At some point. At some point <laughs> this year. I think it was. Yeah, yeah we're, we're in March. Yeah, we're it's almost, definitely this we're year. We're almost in April. I just don't oh, remember. my God. Like, was it March or was it February? Who could say? I No clue. Um, so thank you to EA for the code. And so Jason and I have been playing together. I would say we're about, oh, seven to eight hours in. And uh, it sounds like this game is 10 to 12 hours. So we're almost finished. And we are just having fun taking our time with it and exploring and doing all that fun stuff. So... Again, this is developed by Haze Light Studios, which you may know of A Way Out, um, and it will be $39.99 at lunch, and it has a fun friend pass, which means that, you know, if I'm playing and I own a copy, and Simon is like, I want to play a game with you, because Simon never wants to play games with me. It's just, she just doesn't want to play games with anyone. Ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am, let's <laughs> take it back. <laughs> Um, I have been friends with you for 10 years, more than 10 years. I don't know if it's been 10, definitely yeah, been at least 10 yeah. years. <laughs> we played like two we games together. We have played games together once. Uh, I think we played WoW together. Back Maybe in the twice. Day. Maybe twice. Yeah, don't just, don't But like the fact that wow. we can count it on one hand and we have been friends for 10 years <gasps> is a shame. I know. You wouldn't even add me on Xbox for like. Six that years. was not intentional. I didn't know you weren't friends. <laughs> I'm the worst. I told you multiple times. I know, Cyber. In one ear, out the other. I know. I know. 
<laughs> you're not you're not wrong um yeah friends sometimes you just have to embrace the shit that you deserve and that's me that's what i'm doing right now uh anyway so like if i was like yo steimer i own a copy of the way out do you want to play with me she's like yeah i do but you know i spent all my money on investments this month i don't have anything i'd be like it's okay baby girl i got a friend pass i own the game you do not need to own it so she could play with me which is a really cool feature um yeah so this game circles around cody and may two parents who are unhappily married and have a little girl named rose together and rose sees her parents fighting and she's really upset about it and she cries on some dolls they magically the parents magically turn into the dolls and now you're doing this fun platforming puzzle solving adventure-esque gameplay and i talked a lot about the game in depth during my preview at some point during this year so i won't you know rehash all of that but i will say like the more that we've gone past the second chapter which is where my preview limited was covered or was um what am i trying to say i couldn't talk past this you're you're, you were limited in what you you. could talk about on the preview so baby yeah um i am so impressed by this game it is so much fun the ideas that the developers had for this are so well executed sometimes this game will be a platformer sometimes it's a top-down isometric diablo-esque game even if it's just for a brief moment in time you know sometimes you're doing like rail cart stuff like it's it's always keeping you on your toes and it's keeping everything so fresh and i think what's so fun about it is that this game clearly is built from the ground up for cooperative gameplay and you don't see a lot of games that are built for that or built that way and the puzzles are so fun and so unique and every level or so you get to every chapter there's a new gameplay mechanic so depending like on what you're doing you might have a different ability than you did the last time and the and the abilities are never reused so there was one where i had a match gun and jason had like a sap gun and so he would cover stuff in sap i would shoot the sap it would explode like that's one puzzle mechanic there was one where good fun it was good fun he had a ham oh he had nails i had a hammer we had to use that to our advantage the one that we most recently got is i can clone myself and he can stop time because these characters are like you're never home she's like what do you want me to do clone myself you know and she and then the wife is like he can never manage time and so then he gets granted the ability to be able to manage time like irl time so it does some really fun stuff like that yeah and Again, it's just so the game is really pretty. It's like this mix of Pixar slash photorealism as well. And so it's really stunning to look at. The character animations are fantastic. The voice acting is just so spot on. And the delivery is great. It's so funny and quirky. Laugh out loudable. <laughs> Laugh out loudable. I'll roll Laugh with it. Laugh out loudable. I love it. <laughs> I'll roll with it. They need to put that as a box quote. It's laugh out loudable. Yeah. And it's so charming and cute. And there are some very heartwarming moments. There are some moments when you think these are the worst parents that have ever existed. Their heads are so far up their ass. But um, if you're just looking for a real, real solid co-op game, this is like absolutely it. It's never frustrating. It's always fun. And uh, we've had a fantastic time playing it. Probably one of the most fun co-op games we've ever played. Because again, it is built from the ground up for it. And that is always in mind, no matter what you're doing. And what's so fun about it, too, is the levels and the set design are so great. So like one moment, you know, you're in a shed and like you, these dolls are tiny. And so it's kind of cool to see like a shed from a t- tiny doll's perspective because it's kind of like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. But where it really stands out is when you're in maybe your daughter's playroom. And so it kind of takes like these ball pits and these dolls and everything and, and really kind of themes it around the level. And so while it's not always like necessarily like a one for one scale, it feels like you're in another land or maybe you're in a castle or something. And it's just such a great job. Anyway, I'm loving it. I'll talk about it more next week when we actually finish it. But for now, like, yeah. When does the game come out again? It comes out on the 26th, I believe. Let me, it takes to release date. Come on, Google, be my friend, the 26th. Yeah. Okay. So when you're listening to this podcast, you can go get it. Yeah, that's uh, that's very true. Thank you, Steimer. See, this is why I keep you around. Like, you're just so good at your, you're so good at what you do. But yeah, like definitely, definitely check it out. It's incredible. It's so much fun, and I'm excited to play more. And it's in. We're not trying to rush our way through it, despite the fact that there's no. And I quote Joseph on this shiny shit to collect. There's no collectibles in it. 
But you just kind of want to wander around and see what shenanigans you can get into because there are so many little details that are sprinkled in there that you can tell someone really did take their time to go through everything and say, like, in case the player interacts with this, I want to make sure they get rewarded with this. And um, it's really great. It's a good time. Nice. But highly, highly nice, recommend. Nice. Um, And Steimer, you have been reading a book? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so Andrea gave me The Way of Kings the beginning of this year sometime. I finished that. So now I'm reading Words of Radiance, which is the second book of the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. Um, and it's Andrea was always talking about this author, and he's a very big, famous like uh, fantasy author, but I just had never read his stuff. Mm-hmm. And she gave me, or I think it was hmm, Warbreaker, I think she gave me. She gave me one other one that was sort of a one-off, and I read that, loved it. And then started reading these, and I'm loving them too. So, if you like high fantasy novels, would highly recommend this author. I think he's brilliant. Um, just really fun reads that still have complexity in their storytelling. So it's not like it's not like basic bitch simple, but it's still <laughs> <laughs> it's still fun and entertaining to go along with. And all of the characters are really interesting and very three dimensional. Um, so the one the one thing though that I start, I looked up today and was like, oh no, is the Stormlight Archive is supposed to be ten books and only the fourth one just came out and oh. I was like, shit, why did I do this? Oh, so like, <laughs> would you prefer to wait until they're all out or like, is that what you're... or at least closer to like maybe like at least the halfway point? Um, but because only because Game of Thrones, right? Like right. I started reading those books and then those will never get finished. I have more faith in Sanderson, so hopefully he doesn't do everybody dirty. But um, so regardless, I'm having a, a great time with these books, and I'm very excited to see where these characters go. Uh, you know, I've been craving reading. I don't know why, but like I'm like I want to read something. I just yeah, but I don't know what to read. So maybe I could start. Well, I don't know because if there's you, gonna be ten, you would want to start with something like. Um, I'll look up which one it was that I read. I think I feel like it's Warbreaker. Let me look. Maybe it's not uh, something Breaker. Yes, it's Warbreaker. Okay. So I really, really liked Warbreaker. It's a standalone. It is not a series. So you won't like one and done. Um, it's also a little bit uh, like there is romance in it, which I was not expecting, but enjoyed. Okay. Um, so I think... You should try reading that if you like fantasy. I think it's a cool, it's also a really cool, interesting world. Like um, certain people, their hair changes colors based on their mood. Mm. Um, it's uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting little place. I was actually surprised that um, it is a one-off book because I was like, he built out so many different, like so many little details to this world that you learn while you read this and then just never, never again. <laughs> like you just don't. Is that a good so thing far, or a anyway. bad thing? I think it's a good thing. I okay. mean, the fact that he was willing to put in that much work into oh, a world he's only okay. visited one time, I think is. I see you know, where you're and, coming from. So it's not like all that goes yeah. to waste or anything. It's just more. No, 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 no. Okay. I think it's really interesting. I was just surprised that you would do that and then not write more in that universe because you clearly built the universe out. Yeah. So. Okay. That sounds good. Because I have been reading and you're going to. You're going to roll your eyes. I've been reading. Is it a zombie book? Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, based off Resident Evil. (laughs) Um, It's called Itchy Tasty, an unofficial history of Resident Evil. And it's written. Itchy Tasty? Yeah. So Itchy Tasty is like the super famous within the Resident Evil community um, kind of joke throwback to a file that you read um, in one of the older games. And you, you, it's the journal of someone who's turning into a zombie and they say itchy tasty and it's iconic. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I can see that. Yeah. Um, I, and yeah it's, I can. it's, uh, it's, and yeah. So it's written by Alex. Oh, uh, when we get his name, sorry. I don't want to butcher it. Alex Anil. Uh, A-N-I-E-L is his last name. And it's all about the history of Resident Evil. And it's very fascinating because, of course, I find it fascinating. But I'm even learning some fun little tidbits about it. So I've been reading, but it's not quite like that fantasy, like, itch that I want. Huh? See what I did there? Yeah. Not the fantasy itch. Yeah. It's not the it's not the itchy tasty. Yeah, it's not the itchy tasty. Um, I did want to mention that the Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town Embargo is officially up as of today. 
um, the day we're recording the show. The game is out today as well, but I think we've covered that game pretty extensively, and I don't think our thoughts have really changed that much. Yeah, not until they adjust some of the mechanic the make basically the maker system if they fix that i will go back to the game yeah i don't know what their timeline is on that though yeah i'm not entirely sure on what the timeline for that is either i think that's something that just recently came to light because the game had been out in japan longer and i think uh you know the japanese audience was like yo this isn't that great we hate this yeah um but they did employ patch 1.03 over the weekend i believe it was and they really helped and the patch really helped lower the loading times so they're no longer oh, as that will help yeah it'll it'll be really great and there are a bunch of dlcs coming that are going to introduce new marriage candidates um new scenarios with, i'm already married yeah you're already married you already tied down divorce him give him a uh i think you can divorce in these games i'm not sure probably but i haven't even real filled home up his marriage realizations yet, by so. realtor.com Oops. why is it called I was, what? <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. But if you're listening on youtube.com slash what's good games, you probably just heard an advertisement because I was trying to look up the story of season CLC, <laughs> but the way I have the OBS set up is it pulls all desktop audio in. And so it was just pulling in some Oops. desktop audio. Oops. Whoopsie. Um, anywho. Yeah. So the, the loading times have been greatly lowered, which is fantastic. It really helps out, but it's just more or less the same idea of, I really have no other reason to keep playing right now. I've more or less maxed out all of my skills. It's too groundhoggy day right at this moment. Yeah. Um, the mm -hmm. characters just aren't interesting enough for me to want to fully like stack those hearts up on them and be like, love me. But again, like that's another thing that's being fixed in an upcoming patch. Um, I spent 80 hours with it. I obviously enjoyed my time with it. It's just not where it should be. I think where it could be. Again, especially when you look at uh, Stardew Valley, which is created by one person, and look how phenomenal that game was. So the game is just so good. There's a lot, yeah. There's a lot of work <sighs> that can be done. The potential is absolutely there, and I'm saying, like, if you're looking for a chill game to play, like, this is absolutely it. I mean, we both got a lot of pleasure out of playing it, but um, just you know, maybe temper your expectations and or just wait for those DLCs or those patches to come out. Well, Stammer, I think this is going to do it for this week's episode of the Steinbuckers. Oh, boy. Uh, we're very sorry there was still no Dragon Age news. Actually, no. You know what? There, <gasps> there, well, I should have included it, but I didn't because all it was was a piece of concept art. Oh. Yeah, it was a concept art of a mage in the Tevinter Empor in in Imperium. Is that what it is? Tevinter. Tevinter. I'm scared to Google anything because then I'm just going to get audio yeah imperium okay imperium yeah there was um a piece of concept art that came out by christian daily i think you're sorry i'm trying to get your name right Pre or, oh, playstation dragon age 4 let's see oh yeah no information was provided but the artwork suggests yeah. she's a mage wait where's the picture it's of this oh, badass mage yeah the, i mean the colors are cool mm -hmm. very red obviously very definitely red. looks I like a sad place yes. <laughs> there wouldn't have been much yeah to it's about. raining it's moody she's got a hat though he or she i suppose has a hat that looks like a definitely looks like a witch hat yeah yeah so it makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but so we did get a little a little nugget of information a little tiny morsel if you will but uh, at least we're covering it officially right now there's some concept art out there Go wet your palate if you're desperate. Go see this fancy hat. Go see the fancy hat and this foreboding background of the Tevinter Emporium, which looks awful. Oh, there was a caption, oh. meet me in Minrathos. Oh, okay. So All right. That is the capital of Tevinter, so that's probably where the game will be. How's that for your random snippet of news well past the news segment? I love it. It's so perfect because now we've covered it and we can say we did it. That's like a few pieces of Dragon Age info in the past month or so that we've been able to cover. And I'm proud of us for that. That sink is dripping, baby. <laughs> it's a very slow trip. And we're all desperately <laughs> waiting for the next drop to fall. But again, thank you all so much for listening to this week's episode of the What's Good Games podcast. We will be back next week with another episode for your eyeballs and ear holes. Until then, stay safe, take care, and all that good shit. Goodbye. Goodbye.